Hi guys! Welcome back to the channel! Today we're going to take a look at a Neolithic structure in Ireland predating Newgrange, which we talked about in our previous video. If you haven't watched our video of Newgrange yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click the link in the description down below after this video. Today's location of Carrowmore Megalithic Cemetery is on the Knocknarray Peninsula in County Sligo, Ireland. Carrowmore is one of the four major passage tomb cemeteries in Ireland, the other three being Lachcrew, Carrowkeel and the Bruna Boyne. Carrowmore Megalithic Cemetery is in the heart of an ancient ritual landscape, which is dominated by the mountain of Knocknarray to the west. Carrowmore Megalithic Cemetery is the largest of its kind in all of Ireland, and it's regarded to be one of the oldest megaliths in all of Europe. Various types of monuments have been found at Carrowmore, but there are two types that we will focus on, the chamber tombs and dolmens. Chamber tombs consist of a burial chamber, sometimes more than one, and they are usually covered with earth and stone. Sometimes they are attached to a passage with large stones, as we saw in Newgrange and Kalanish. Dolmens are a type of single chamber megalithic tombs usually consisting of two or more vertical megaliths supporting a large horizontal capstone. Sometimes they're covered with earth and smaller stones. The dolmens at Carrowmore are usually surrounded by a circle of standing stones. At Carrowmore there have been 60 monuments identified and 30 of those are still visible today. Although archaeologists estimate that there originally were between 100 and 200 monuments at this site. During the early part of the 19th century AD, this site has been changed a lot due to farmers clearing land, meddling by amateur archaeologists and quarrying. This all caused a lot of damage to the site. Irish folklore date these tombs back to the Irish mythological past. I'd like to do an Irish Mythology Explained video in the future, so let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments down below. Results of radiocarbon dating done between 1994 and 2000 suggest that the oldest monument at Carrowmore Cemetery was built around 5400 BC, making it more than 7400 years old and 2,000 years older than Newgrange, which we talked about previously. At Carrowmore there have been two seasonal campaigns of excavation. The excavations were led by Swedish archaeologist Göran Burehult, who has been writing about their findings and new data extensively since. Burehult was personally invited to dig by Michael J. O'Kelly. The first seasonal campaign was a large-scale excavation at four of the undestroyed tombs at Carrowmore between 1977 and 1982. A second excavation campaign was led by the Swedish team between 1994 and 1998. The portal tomb Listogiel was excavated between 1996 and 1998. Today, 30 radiocarbon dates from the Carrowmore monuments are available. The proposed construction dates all fall within the late Mesolithic and early Neolithic era, while other data indicate secondary use in the late Neolithic, the Bronze Age and Iron Age. Megalithic structures are almost always multi-period sites. They have been built, used, reused, rebuilt, used again and so on and so forth an indication that these monuments continue to make their presence on the landscape felt over millennia. The Carrowmore Megalithic Cemetery covers an area about half a square kilometer and the central part extends in a north-south direction. It's about one kilometer long and about 600 meters wide. Outside the central part of the cemetery, various other monuments occur mostly to the north. Altogether, 45 sites still exist in the area. The layout of Carrowmore Cemetery is clearly that of an arranged ritual landscape, where the tombs have been placed in an oval shape around tomb number 51, also known as Listogiel. The tombs on the western side face eastward, and the tombs on the eastern side face westward. This suggests that the layout must have been deliberately planned before the construction of the very first tombs. 
Ja, kom maar. The oldest known tomb at Carrowmore is tomb number 4. It's a simple dolmen and the radiocarbon date suggests that it was constructed around 5400 BC. Tomb number 51, also known as Listogiel, is a burial mound and also the largest monument at Carrowmore Cemetery. It is 32 meters in diameter and used to be around 16 meters in height as was recorded in the 1690s. The mound has a rectangular shaped chamber, but there is no evidence of a passage or an entrance to that chamber. The chamber is covered with a limestone roof slab, but Listogiel bears no resemblance to any of the monuments at Carrowmore Cemetery or any other monuments in all of Ireland for that matter. This indicates this mound not to be a passage tomb, but to be a portal tomb. It's also notable for being the only monument at Carrowmore Cemetery with megalithic art. Curved symbols were carved into the front of the roof slab, and more artwork has been found inside the chamber. The artwork and limestone construction suggest a fairly late construction date for this tomb, which is strange since it's in the center of the cemetery. It's the only spot on the cemetery where you have a clear view of the sea on both sides of the Knocknaray Peninsula, Sligo Bay in the north and Balisader Bay in the south. This is also the only tomb at the cemetery where both inhumation and cremation have been found. Inhumation is just another word for simply burying the dead, as we do today. Concentrations of unburned human bones were found outside the eastern part of the central chamber at Listogiel tomb. It was a piece of skull showing clear cut marks, most likely the result of scalping, and had been dated to be from around 3300 BC. The human remains found at Caramore Cemetery suggest that the inhabitants of the region had a complex set of funerary practices. This included processes of reburial and excarnation. Excarnation is the removal of the flesh and organs of a deceased person before burial. There is reason to believe that specific family groups used these monuments for their burial and funerary practices. About two kilometers west of Caramore lies Primrose Grange. Sixteen teeth found from twelve different individuals show evidence that first, second and third degree related family members were buried both at Carrowmore and Primrose Grange. I will definitely discuss Primrose Grange in a future video. Artifacts found in burial sites at Carrowmore Cemetery include hollow scrapers, mushroom headed antler pins, stone or clay balls and arrowheads made from flint from the Antrim region. Cremation was thought to be the common way of burial in this time period, but findings like these unburned bones dating this far back suggest that both inhumation and cremation were practiced at the same time. The new available evidence supports the idea of a much more complex background for these Irish megaliths and the different kind of tomb types. At least more complex than the previously thought chronological stages and geographical spread. But the evolutionary development can clearly be defined in the difference of tomb types. The oldest known tombs are the smaller and simpler monuments. And the complex mega monuments, such as the passage tombs from Noth, Douth and Newgrange from the Bruna Boyne area, have been constructed much later. At Carrowmore Cemetery, this is very evident. The earliest dated monuments, consisting of simple stone cysts and small dolmens, are succeeded by a rudimentary cruciform chamber, and eventually succeeded by a large cairn monument known as Listogiel with a limestone chamber. Listogiel is then most likely succeeded by Queen Mauve's grave on the top of the Knocknaray mountain marking the end and final peak of the megalithic tradition on the Knocknaray Peninsula. In the most recent decades, a growing number of megalithic monuments in Western Europe have been shown to be dated much older than previously thought. Although the oldest radiocarbon dating at Carrowmore is contested to this day for being an outlier, that doesn't mean this date is wrong. It was long thought that the tomb building in Ireland spread from east to west. 
and that the Bruna Boyne monuments represented the beginning of this tradition. But Carol Moore shows us that this interpretation is not correct. The building of megalithic tombs is a widespread phenomenon, extending all the way from the Mediterranean along the west coast of Europe into Scandinavia. And with evidence found during excavations at Carrowmore, there are indications that not as previously thought, the building of megalithic tombs originated south along the Mediterranean, but originated simultaneously on different places in Europe. These findings suggest that we will have to rewrite our megalithic history, as recent findings of the last few decades have given us much more information and therefore changing our views of the past. But there is much more work to be done when it comes to finding out more from our Stone Age past. In 1989 the state purchased about 25 acres. On that land stood a couple of monuments and a small cottage. The cottage was developed to be a basic visitor center. Later land purchases means that most of the site is now in public ownership. The small farmhouse on the site houses an exhibition and from March until the end of October provides guided tours and multilingual self-guide tours of Caramore Cemetery. Almost all of the tombs can be accessed with these tours. Adults pay only 5 euros and there are special discounts for seniors, groups, students and families. During the summer, the center is open from 10 in the morning every day until 5 in the afternoon. I think it's definitely worth a visit once in a lifetime. Next time, we will dive into another monument in another location. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos. And if you'd like to know the moment that we upload, then click the bell icon for notifications. And leave a comment down below with tips or tricks or any other monuments you'd like me to talk about or cover in a future video. And we will see you next time. Bye guys!